Mr. President, are you supportive of the push at the lower house to um, amend the 1987 constitution? Well, uh, it really, we're just beginning to study uh, because we keep talking about economic provisions that are getting in the way with, uh, um, uh, with some of the potential investors that we are trying to bring to the Philippines. Uh, so the, the, what we are looking at here is uh, the opportunity cost of those who would like to invest here, but somehow uh, the laws that derive from the Constitution when it comes to the economic provisions do not allow them to or make it non-viable for them. So that's the study to see if, uh, if, uh, it, requires, if it requires that or if we can do it any other way. Uh, but uh, in my interest, my primary interest is to try and make our, our country a uh, investment-friendly place. And what else we'll see. That's why we'll, the study is really not about the constitution. It's about what do we need to do. What do we need to change so that these potential investors will, in fact, come to the Philippines. Yeah. For this reason, I, together with the leadership, Senate President Pro Temp Lauren Legarda, met with President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and the leadership of the House of Representatives. On January 11, before Divan de Honor, in order to raise concerns on the proposed amendment contained in the People's Initiative. The President agreed with us that the proposal was too divisive and asked the Senate to instead take the lead in reviewing the economic provisions of the Constitution. In this way, we can preserve our bicameral nature of legislation. In fairness to the President, hindi niya po alam yung, na yung People's Initiative language was to uh, diminish the powers of the Senate. The President, first of all, and I'd like to thank the President for his comment that the PI is too divisive and even mentioned news items from the major networks that he watched the night before. At sabi, oh, nagkakagulo na. Bakit nagkagaganyan, uh, uh, may bayaran. And he said, he even said na, and I thank the President for this, because he even said na, eh ako dati ako senador. Eh bilang dati senador, hindi din ako papayag na ma-undermine o ma-diminish ang kapangyarihan ng senado sa pagdating ng usaping uh, bicameralism or bicameral form of government. You know, ayan, uh, kaya... <laughs> Tablado si House Speaker dito sa sitwasyon na to dahil nga dyan sa People's Initiative o yung sinasabi na PI. Ibang PI ito ha, People's Initiative, hindi yung PI na mura. Baka ma-misinterpret yung salitang PI eh, di ba? So, inaayos ng Presidente itong uh, usapin na to regarding dyan sa so-called cha-cha, no? At uh, doon nga sa, nag, sa nakarang interview niya na pinakita nga natin, ay uh, sinasabi nga niya it's not the whole, no? kundi eventually nakapokus doon sa tinatawag na economic provision para yung mga investors, eh, hindi kakabakaba. Sabi nga, ikaw man ang maging investor, tapos eh, nasa balag ng alanganin ang magiging position mo pag ikaw ay nag-invest sa Pilipinas. So yun ang pinatututukan ng ating presidente upang... Uh, maging patas no patas sa Pilipino patas sa mga foreign investor pero babanggitin kasi dito na sabi nga ni sasabi nga ni Senate ni Senator Mig Subiri na hindi pabor ang presidente ukol doon sa tinatawag na yung pagbebenta ng lupa ayan kala ko nawala <laughs> di ba sa foreign no na ariin na may makaririnig niya mamaing kwento then na uh, And halos may kinuha lang tayo do sa pinaka-point nung uh, naging press conference ni SP Zubiri. No? Apos, hindi ko alam kung ano nangyayari sa technical group ng Senado. May mga part kasi doon na biglang nawawala yung audio. So, uh, intindihin na lang natin. So, inano naman natin yung mga basic parts na yun na mga important na parte at mga naging sagot niya dito sa press con na ito. 
Pero isang pagpapatunay ito na tulad nga na sinasabi, walang kinalaman ng presidente na pinapakalat ng mga bugok, bulok at bobo loggers na <coughs> si PBBM ang uh, may gusto nitong cha-cha na sinasabi upang uh, mapahaba daw yung kanyang uh, termino. No, which is ang focus ng presidente ay regarding sa economic provision na sayang nga kasi yung mga pledges. No? Kahit anong panahon ni FPRRD, maraming pledges ang hindi natuloy kasi nasabi ba diba, puro pledges lang naman pala yan, so pangako lang. Siyempre, you have to test the waters before you go. Diba? Bago ka lumusong, kailangan testingin mo muna yung tubig. Malalim ba? Mababaw ba? Hindi yung basta-basta ka lang susulong. Hindi kasi naiintindihan ng mga masyadong nagmamagaling na sitwasyon na ikaw ang may pera, ikaw yung kapitalista, mag invest ka, then suddenly eh, malalagay sa hindi maganda sitwasyon, so papaano pang ire-retoke yung mga ganyang bagay? Yung mga batas kasing ginagawa ng ating legislatibo ay hindi naman naka-insert sa tinatawag nating constitution. So, it might end up na sasabihin na iyakit sa Supreme Court and it, it can be declared as unconstitutional. So, if the constitution, if the provi of any provision sa constitution ay ma-amend at uh, it's inside the constitution, even the Supreme Court will not disagree with that kasi dadaan pa rin naman niya sa pamamahala ng ating uh, Korte Suprema if this law, especially talking about the constitution or any provision of the constitution, is ayon sa batas. Right? So, pakinggan natin itong buong... Uh, Uh, naging parte ng presko ni, ni SP Zubiri upang maintindihan natin yung kanyang mga inihayag sa kanilang naging meeting no, dyan sa Senado, uh, sa Malacanang kasama si Speaker Martin Romualdez, si Lauren Ligarda, si Sandro uh, Marcos no, uh, na medyo naging mainit nga daw yung kanilang pagdedebate at hopefully it end up well. No? At this time kasi wala pa tayo nakikita na sasabihin na nagpahayag ang ating uh, Speaker of the House, Martin Romualdez. As, uh, as, of today, uh, as of yesterday kasi sa ating nabasa, siya ay nasa Zurich para doon sa pag-uumpisa pag ng WEP, no? yung uh, World Economic Forum na baka, na baka pupunta ulit ang Presidente. So doon sila nakapokus sa part na yun. So if they are working out generally dito sa mga ganitong sitwasyon, Eh, sabi nga, tuloy-tuloy yung target ng ating gobyerno para sa pag-asenso ng ating bansa. Okay? So, panoorin natin ito at uh, upang maunawaan natin ang mga pangyayari at mga naging ganap tungkol sa pagkontra ng presidente dito sa sinasabi na People's Initiative, which is can be done by, according to bicameral system ng uh, upper house at ng lower house at uh, nang maiwasan yung tinatawag na constitutional crisis. Okay? Pero bagong lahat, kung bago ka sa channel ko na to, please don't forget to click like, leave your comments, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell and click all para lagi kang updated sa aking mga bagong uploads at makajoin ka sa ating mga live. Himay na't balay taktakan and please share, share, share so we can spread the love and the knowledge. Okay? So, tara na. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. It is an enduring symbol of our democracy, enshrining the foundations of our nationhood and reflecting the consensus of our citizenry. While we respect and recognize the people as our sovereign with the right to call for constitutional change, we must guard against any attempt to revise the Constitution by exploiting our democratic processes under the guise of a People's Initiative. The People's Initiative on Article 17, Section 1 of the Constitution stoked fears of the unknown among our citizens. Any proposal to amend or revise the Constitution must identify the provisions being changed, containing their full text, but most importantly, must be forthcoming on the impact, effect, and true intention behind the proposed changes. Only then can they be presented for approval to the people, our sovereign, from whom all powers emanate. The proposal subject of the People's Initiative could have led, or could lead, rather, to a constitutional crisis, destabilizing our bicameralism 
and upsetting the systems of checks and balances. While the Senate is vehemently opposed to a dilution of its participation in the task of reviewing the Constitution, we exercised all restraint because in any conflict, it is always the people who stand to suffer the most. For this reason, I, together with the leadership, Senate President Pro Temp Lauren Legarda, met with President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and the leadership of the House of Representatives on January 11, before Divan de Honor, in order to raise concerns on the proposed amendment contained in the People's Initiative. The President agreed with us that the proposal was too divisive and asked the Senate to instead take the lead in reviewing the economic provisions of the Constitution. In this way, we can preserve our bicameral nature of legislation. While the Constitution must be reviewed in keeping with the demands of, our, of the present and possibilities of the future, we believe that we must first exhaust all avenues open to us through policy making and legislation. That is precisely what the Senate did when we enacted amendments to the Public Services Act and liberalized many industries to attract foreign investments, encourage competition, and improve the delivery of basic services to our countrymen. The Senate stands firm behind the Public Services Act as a landmark piece of legislation that reforms our economic landscape. We, however, and I'd like to repeat, we, however, recognize that the case assailing the Constitution of Republic Act number 11659 or the amendments to the Public Services Act is currently pending before the Supreme Court. As such, the Senate commits that it will work with the House of Representatives to remove all doubts on the constitutionality of the law by ensuring that the liberalized policies contained in the Public Services Act can be implemented and relied on by investors as an enduring policy. It is only in this respect the Senate can agree to modify the Constitution. The framers of the Constitution deliberately ensured that modifying it will be an arduous process, never to be taken lightly. We wish to assure the people that in reviewing the economic provisions of the Constitution, we will be circumspect. We are guided by the knowledge that our sovereign is watching and that the work we should do represents no interest other than the people's interest. So that is my statement, ladies and gentlemen, of our friends in the media and the people watching us in, uh, live in uh, the TV and uh, radio as well as social media. Yes, my dear. Sir, you said that President Marcos parang commanded you that Senate will take the lead um, yes. in terms of amending the Constitution. But uh, mas gusto nyo policy making, so Public Services Act. But by any chance, does that mean, sir, that you will be, the, the Senate is more open to charter change this time around since my order na kayo from the President? Ganito kasi yan, yung the complaints of some of the investors. The question, the question first asked is, do we need to amend the Constitution, right? So now, we feel in the Senate that after passing the Public Services Act, hindi na po kailangan amendahan yung ating provision when it comes to economic, um, uh, economic uh, amendments. Unfortunately, my pending, uh, my pending case sa Supreme Court, marami pong nag-file. So ano nangyayari daw, maraming natatakot pumasok sa bansa dahil maski na meron na po tayong batas, wala pong TRO, but what if after one or two years, the uh, Supreme Court declares it unconstitutional? And once the Supreme Court declares it unconstitutional, paano daw nila mababalik sa 60-40 yung kanilang mga investments? So, may rason. No? May mga 
mabibigat din na rason. And that's why we are open uh, with the leadership of the Senate. We had several meetings with the senators after. We are open, open rather, to discussions on the amendment of the Constitution on these particular provisions. But we are going to do it um, separately, voting separately. And that is why we have prepared a resolution now signed by myself, Senator Lauren Legarda, and Senator Sani Angara on the economic provisions, amendments of the economic provisions of the Constitution. So with this, um, we had asked, uh, the, the, the majority members had asked Senator Sani Angara to lead a subcommittee on the uh, Committee on Constitutional Amendments uh, to tackle this particular issue. We chose Senator Sani Angara kasi kailangan talaga natin dito ay abogado. So, uh, with due respect, hindi ko pa nakakausap si Senator Robin Padilla. Um, he's still abroad. But when he comes back, kakausapin po namin siya at uh, magre-request po kami na kung pwede, para dito sa usapin na ito, we will ask uh, a creation of a subcommittee for this purpose. So, uh, just to make a long story short, we had a meeting, um, uh, the chain of events that had happened. So, uh, nag-meeting po, ta uh, nag po tayo, nag nakipag-meeting po ako kay Presidente noong Tuesday. And uh, I raised the alarm about the People's Initiative. He was very gracious enough to meet with me, and we discussed uh, how we can defuse the situation. In fairness to the President, hindi niya po alam yung, na yung People's Initiative language was to uh, diminish the powers of the Senate. And uh, after that, he asked me to meet with the speaker. We met with the speaker. We, I met with him uh, uh, on Wednesday, oh, sorry, Tuesday evening, after which we had a lively and vigorous debate on the issue. And uh, we all decided to meet with the president once again at 3 p.m. in Malacanang last Thursday. In that meeting, we, well, we were there early, so uh, uh, we met together with uh, Senator Lauren Legarda, kasama po namin, si Congressman uh, Sandro Marcos, uh, Sap uh, Anton Lagdameo, uh, and uh, the speaker and myself. <coughs> In that meeting, we discussed the scenarios. And of course, I defended the position of the Senate na talagang malabo yan kasi as far as we're concerned, their plan is unconstitutional because we are a bicameral system of government. Kaya, nung pagkita po natin kay, Pres kay Presidente, um, we decided, the President, first of all, and I'd like to thank the President for his comment that the PI is too divisive. And he even mentioned news items from the major networks that he watched the night before. At sabi, oh, nagkakagulo na, bakit nagkakaganyan, uh, uh, may bayaran. And he said, he even said na, and I thank the President for this, because he even said na, eh ako dati ako senador. Eh bilang dati senador, hindi din ako papayag na ma-undermine o ma-diminish ang kapangyarihan ng senado sa pagdating ng usaping uh, bicameralism or bicameral form of government. So maganda po ang direksyon ng Pangulo. And ang um, sabi niya sa akin at kay Speaker, sabi niya, why doesn't the Senate take the lead in the discussions of the economic provisions and then you approve your version which the House can adopt? So that was the position of the President. Para hindi na tayo maglalagay pa kung ano-ano pang mga uh, uh, amendments na sa tingin natin ay magagalit ang taong bayan. So, um, that was quite clear in the meeting. And that's why in the Van de Honor, medyo smiling na po kami ng uh, Speaker of the House at uh, ang Presidente ng Senado. Because we were able to resolve that very big issue. That night, nag-meeting po kami with the senators. We had about 14 senators that met that night and we discussed the possibilities. Nakuha ko naman po yung uh, full support ng majority of the majority members of the Senate 
we were also there. Uh, we also had a member of the minority there, Santa Teresa Antiveros. And of course, we said to her that uh, we know their position, we will respect their position, but I'm being transparent. As the Senate President, I want to be transparent that these uh, discussions will be taking place once the Senate resumes on January 22. Sorry, sa pa. Sir, kasi ever since naman, di ba, divided yung Senate in terms of cha-cha. And parang kayo mismo nagsabi dati, sir, na pag pinush yan, hindi talaga yan mananalo dito sa Senate. But since kayo mismo, sir, yung may reso na, did you get the support of the 14 senators para pumasa po yung uh, economic provisions cha-cha? We got the support of the, all the senators that were there except, of course, for the minority. The minority is non-committal. They have to see the amendments first. They want to participate in discussions and the debates. I'm talking about Senator Visa. She was the one who said na, na hindi wala muna siyang may dadagdag. Although she was happy that uh, that the discussions will be moving away from the plan of the PI na ikapon kami. Uh, happy po silang lahat na ang sinabi ng Pangulo na dapat dito na tayo sa ganitong klaseng proseso. Hindi po yung sa gusto ng uh, uh, people and balances that we are, which is enshrined by the Constitution through a bicameral form of government. So, no, no, we need a, a total of 18 votes when it comes to amending, because two-thirds and 16, three-fourths is 18. Well, ang binabanggit niya palagi, dyan lang naman sa gusto mag-amend, dahil sa economic provisions. According to him, officially in front of me. Any, I don't want to put any words in the speaker's mouth. I would rather that you ask the speaker himself on his position but on this format. Was it clear that he's speaking uh, for, the, for the 300 members of the House of Representatives during the meeting? Nandun din naman si Sandro. So Sandro is a, a senior deputy majority floor leader. And uh, um, I believe the message was loud and clear. I, I hope that the message was loud and clear. Sir? So, yeah. SP, uh, isundan ko lang yung kay Marlon. During that meeting, yeah, was there you. a commitment given by Speaker Romualdez na they will not support in any other way yung PI? Because according to PIRMA, they are working um, on this, on the PI, in coordination with the uh, Congress. I no longer want to fight with my colleagues in Congress. <laughs> One week po ako hindi nakakatulog. Kaya hindi rin ako nakakasagot sa inyo dahil may inaayos po tayong gusot and um, we were able to get consensus from, from everyone including the President. I think those questions about the Speaker should be asked to the Speaker. Mm -hmm. Was there a... How can you, how can you guard um, the, the eventual proposal of other members of, for example, Senate uh, with respect to, kasi sabi nyo nga po, economic provision lang pero syempre independent uh, minded naman ng mga senators and some really want some political uh, amendments. Well, ang mangyayari dyan, uh, my dear colleagues, when discussions on, for example, the, if you see the resolution that we will file today, nakapirma na kaming tatlo, if you see the resolution that we filed today, it's limited to yung um, amendments to public services, as well as education, and uh, as well as um, uh, advertising. We got the guide from the president. Uh, we, I hope that the president will not uh, be upset if I share this information. Pero si president mismo ay niya ng lupa na ibigay sa foreigners. Siya mismo nagsabi. Malabu yun. He said that, uh, and I quote the president, this will give us problems in our housing program. It will increase tax rates and it will increase prices of uh, land in the Philippines. And he even cited some countries, kung saan, na may foreign ownership, na yung mga mismong locals ay hindi na po nakaka-afford ng lupa dun at lumalabas na. Kaya na nga nagkakaroon ng Asian hate. There are some areas like Vancouver, Toronto, and Canada, where in a lot of uh, Chinese, Hong Kong nationals, pumunta doon, binili lahat ng property, 
yung mga Canadians na original na, na lumalabas na, hindi na Sir, sir. And even media, sabi niya. Ayaw din niya ng media kasi uh, kung may foreign ownership of media, baka mag-influence peddling pa yan dito on certain agendas. So ayaw din niya po yun. Oh. So we're limiting it as far as the Senate is concerned, that Thursday night discussion, we're, limit, we're limiting it to the scope of the Public Services Act. Education, because we feel, lahat po kami naniniwala, na bakit hindi makapasok ang Harvard dito? Ang Yale, ang Stanford, pwede naman sila mag-set up po ng skwelahan dito. They do it in Singapore, they do it in other countries. So we should allow them para ang tumas naman ang dekalidad ng ating edukasyon. Um, and of course, uh, we're limiting it to these three right now. Sir, two, two more questions lang, yeah, sir. Pabusin uh, ko na lang si and, and then... Oh, oh, sorry, Marlon Sandel. Right, um, sir, so pumayag doon si Speaker na... Uh, in the first place, aware si Speaker na merong ganitong resolution and he agreed na in the end, at the end of the day, they will just vote uh, according to to your version. Ganun po. That was the agreement that we had made in Malacanang on the 11th of January at 4 p.m. Okay. Sir, last question. So, so, yan yung agreement po namin and I hope uh, uh, um, all parties will, will agree and uh, and we thank the president for that because at uh, ang totoo diyan talaga magkakaroon ng constitutional crisis hindi po talaga papayag alam mo lahat ng mga kasamahan ko atat na atat na umatake at sabi ko sa kanila pag lumaban tayo there's a point of no return kasi kung magkakainitan ng dugo ang house and the uh, senate paano na paano natin maipapasa yung mga batas natin eh kung ayaw mo ayaw mo makipag-usap sa congressmen how do we do the bicams the bicameral conferences how do we do our ledak? Pagkakagulo, masyado mainit. So, ang talo dyan ang taong bayan. So, I had to keep a cooler head and um, even if it was very difficult for me not to say anything about this issue, we wanted to find a win-win solution that would limit uh, the impact uh, in terms of uh, 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 constitu a constitutional crisis with both houses of Congress. Sir, one last question from my end. Is this going to be a priority? Is it going to be priority? It will be a priority uh, by uh, the Senate as far as we're concerned. Only, only uh, on economic provisions, napaka yan, we will have public hearings. And in these public hearings, we will have debates. And as you said, kung meron man mag-propose mag, mag, uh, mag, uh, uh, ng controversial, dito sa Senado, term limits or removal of term limits or uh, change of government, I'm sure the members of the committee, the subcommittee, or kung gusto ng ating mga kababayan, gawin natin na committee on the whole uh, to be uh, presided by uh, myself and Senator Angara, we can put it on a vote. And obviously, ano yan, 18 votes at each time. Sa committee level, para paglabas na committee report, that was voted upon by two, three-fourths of the members, you final committee report, and then we'll put it in plenary and make a vote on a, again uh, for 18 votes or for three-fourths vote. Well, I cannot, I, I cannot predict what my colleagues would be saying, but I think the simpler the amendment, the easier to get 18 votes from my colleagues.